Good morning. We are waking up in Haines, Alaska. The tide change is so great here that even though we're docked, they need to use tender boats to bring us ashore. Later in the day when the tide rises, we'll be able to go back to using the docks. That right there, that yellow boat is the tender boat. Look at that scenery. This place is beautiful. I believe Haynes is probably the smallest of the ports that we're going to be in. I don't think this is caught up with the concept of uh, cruise passengers. It hasn't become uh, completely commercialized yet, but I kind of think it's on its way. fresh fish you visit the frog lady I wonder if she's got frog legs oh yeah Just a short walk from the cruise port is the American Bald Eagle Foundation. This is Bella, a bald eagle. She flew into a power line and her injury required partial amputation of her right wing. And she was brought here for rehabilitation. As you watch her, her stare makes you feel like you could be her prey. Adult bald eagles have a wingspan of six to seven and a half feet. They weigh six to 14 pounds and their nests can be extremely large. The largest recorded nest was nine and a half feet in diameter, 20 feet deep and weighed almost three tons. Hi, Edson. He's like, ah, hang on, come back. I know you have more food for me. <laughs> I'm not gonna have to go out for another like half hour. I was just asking him to hop on the scale so I know how much he weighs. It's so funny. I'm not getting on anything. <laughs> oh, right? That's like, funny. we ask all the birds to step on the scale every single day, but I can't tell you the last time I stepped on a scale. I've been on a cruise for four days. I'm like, oh, yeah, absolutely. The winter here is really cold and it's dark all the time, so I do a lot of cooking. <laughs> Uh, so he said yes, and we're now able to hang out here and teach you all about falcons. Uh, but like 98% of the time that he comes out on the glove, we don't use the equipment to keep him from flying away. It's for that 2% of the time that things happen that I can't control or predict that he wears it for. Um, he is free to move up and down the glove. He can move his feet around if he wants. Uh, He's just choosing not to. He's being a ham and hanging out sunny. <laughs> so, cities have skyscrapers, and that mimics cliff sides. So they were they had a place to nest. And the other thing that cities have a lot of are pigeons. And so these falcons were nesting in on these skyscrapers and eating pigeons, and have found a really unlikely home in urban areas which is really neat. And so, like I said, they are now not endangered anymore. Their population numbers are really doing well. They are found in all kinds of places. They have a really wide range. Um, and that's where their name comes from. So peregrine comes from, it means pilgrim or wanderer. And that's because these guys can be found all across North America. Be kind of toasty, but also in the sun. So I 
could be talking about Oli all day. I'd stay out here with him sunning all day. But I do want to know what you all want to know. So if you have any questions, feel free to shout them out. Let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. Oli and I are just out here soaking up the sun right now. Uh, we're not free flying right now because of avian influenza. Um, everybody who comes out on the glove, or all the birds that are coming out from space are coming out on the glove. So Cirrus doesn't do equipment work like this, so he has to <coughs> out on the glove. Hans does. Um, so right now it's just been Hans and Oli because of avian influenza. But um, for the most part, we work almost entirely free flight with the birds that come out, with the exception pretty much of Oli because free flight is not the right job. Today. This equipment that he's wearing is not to force him to be here. Uh, he has, you might have noticed he hasn't tried to fly away once. He is just hanging out. He is choosing to be here and I am paying him for choosing to be here with <laughs> tiny pieces of food. Uh, the equipment that he's wearing is just in case something that I can't predict happens. Uh, if a dog or a small child or something came running right up on us and I couldn't predict that, Oli would do the smart bird thing of putting him somewhere safe and trying to fly away. And because he's a falcon and can go really fast, he would do that so quickly that I would lose sight of him. And so for safety, he does wear this equipment, uh, but I had to ask before I put every single piece of it on, and I had to ask him to step onto the glove. Um, so he could have said no at any point in time, and he knows that he gets to come out in the sun if <laughs> they are obligate carnivores, so they don't eat plants. Oli's actually afraid of plants. We don't know why, <laughs> but he's afraid of them. So we'll often give plants as enrichment um, for the other birds. So you might notice some of the birds have branches hanging yeah. in their enclosures to mimic natural tree cover. Um, or we'll take like skunk cabbage leaves and wrap their bits in it and give them to them so that they can rip through it, but they'll never eat those plants. It's just a new texture, um, something new for them to rip into. We don't do that for Oli because he's afraid of plants. <laughs> Nope, um, there are some raptors that are insectivores. Um, I know kestrels, really tiny falcons, they are, uh, but nobody on our team. And not far from the port, you can also visit the Hammer Museum. Beautiful harbor. back to the ship we noticed these tombstones we walked up here this grave site it's October 25th 1897 this one here Mr. David Shaw Nagel, Natville, died in Haines, Alaska, December 12th, 1906. George Patty, November 13th, 1902, 25 years old. On the way back to the ship, we ran across some tombstones and this display, the Keystone Driller. about to say goodbye to Haines, Alaska. I got myself some cookies and a cheese sandwich. 
and some lemonade as we sit and wait for everybody to get on board so we can get underway. Nice little place. The American Bald Eagle Center is what I think it's called. That was worthwhile. And then we took a walk downtown and there's a couple gift shops down there but this is not as commercialized as the other stops at least not yet so it's kind of a nice little stroll and now it's at high tide dramatic difference more than 20 feet See the guys down there on the pier? They're ready to cast our lines off. Notice, it takes two of them to lift the heavier ropes. <laughs> 